Hey YouTube, Alex here, and in today's video I want to answer the question, why do some expats feel less lonely overseas? Part of the reason for this video is the ongoing loneliness epidemic in the United States. I imagine many Western countries are dealing with the loneliness issues as well. I imagine most Western countries, if not all, are dealing with the loneliness epidemic as well. Point number one is that point number one is that most people are moving to countries where the local folk, the local people, are known for their hospitality and kindness. Countries like Mexico and Thailand have been known for decades as tourism hotspots, and many visitors find themselves wondering, wow, I really like the people here. I wonder if I could live here. Countries like Mexico and Thailand are well known around the world for having a great sense of hospitality, offering a variety of activities, uh, a variety of activities, interesting culture, and great food, not to mention lovely weather and beaches, mountains, just so much on offer in these places, in these countries. Contrast this, uh, contrast this warm and welcoming, contrast this warm and welcoming atmosphere to the West where people generally keep to themselves. They typically don't know their neighbors. Maybe they've had to move around a lot for work opportunities and they just don't feel that strong sense of connection to their neighborhood, to the people that live near them. They do feel kind of isolated and lonely. I think this is especially true in the big cities where most people are not from the big cities. They move there for work opportunities. And so people, even if they've lived in a place for a long time, don't necessarily feel a strong attachment to that place in the same way people in other countries where people typically don't move as much or if they move they move with their family and so that does offer this kind of comparison for a lot of people where they're really shocked at how calm and comfortable and warm the environment can be how social people can be compared to their home country where if you strike up a conversation with a stranger then people will give you a strange look while I don't speak Thai I do feel that I can approach people more easily easily here in Thailand than I can back in the United States. In the United States, we have such a strong sense of suspicion and caution around other people that many of us just don't have to the same extent here in Thailand. So it makes approaching other people to have basic conversation much more easy and you can kind of have a friendly banter that seems to be missing from back home. The number two reason that many expats feel less lonely overseas is that they often feel that they have something in common with other expats or other foreigners living overseas. In some cases, they feel like they have much more in common with some of these expats than they did with some people back home. I found at times back home that people have a very fixed way of approaching things and they don't have a lot of patience for deviation outside of the norm. When you're talking to other expats, they're typically people that are open to new experiences. They're open to these radical ways of doing things, this idea of leaving your home country, which to me shouldn't really be that wild to somebody who's growing up in Australia or the United States or New Zealand because most of the people from these countries have ancestors that came from other parts of the world. Unless you are a part of an indigenous population in one of these countries, then your ancestors likely left where they were from for a better life in one of these countries. You know that when you're dealing with other expats, you will not face certain kinds of judgment. Um, you will face some judgment. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I think that expats can be some of the most judgmental people out there on the interwebs. Many will not judge your reasoning for wanting to leave the United States. I think that more and more people have solid reasoning as to why they would rather live in a developing country than in their home country. At times back home too, there can be this kind of cult of positivity. If you genuinely had some bad experiences back in the West, then you may have some people where you can see eye to eye to them, you can empathize with what they've gone through, what led them to where they're at. And in an ideal world, you wouldn't be facing judgment for some of the mild oddities about yourself. There are some things people do deserve to be judged for. Part of what makes people feel lonely in the West is that the culture of judgment is encouraged. And in the short term, people feel better about themselves because look, I'm better than them, or at least I'm not as bad as them. But in the long term, it isolates them and it contributes to those feelings. I think 
think a lot of the snap judgments happen because people are trying to be as efficient as possible. We evolve to make decisions quickly, and so if we reach a quick conclusion, we can move on to other decisions. That doesn't really contribute to people's happiness. The number three reason why many expats feel less lonely overseas is that they may not have anything back home. I hear a lot of whataboutism when it comes to this type of lifestyle. A lot of people often say, well, what about back home? And what about this? And what about that? And they don't understand. For a lot of us, we don't have as much back home. Maybe we've been through a divorce. Maybe we've lost some loved ones, like is true in my case. Maybe we're not super close to our remaining family. Maybe we've moved around a lot for work and we don't have that strong social circle that maybe some other folks have. And so when people start playing this whataboutism, they're really avoiding the more difficult question at hand, which is, are some people dissatisfied with their lives in the West? More importantly, for some reasons outside of their control. And many of them just can't relate to a lot of us who have spent a lot of lonely days in our apartments back home, just kind of sitting around watching YouTube about places that we'd rather be, places with beautiful weather and healthy, nutritious food and interesting culture and a nice social climate. And how many years some of us have waited. I mean, for me, I first came to Southeast Asia six years ago and I've known the entire time I wanted to try living over here, but it took me some years to save up and get the courage to commit and be in a position in my career where I had the break necessary to do it. But during much of that time, I just spent a lot of time researching. Like some of what I talk about on my channel is from personal experience, but some of it is also from just doing tons of research on forums, watching videos, reaching out to expats that I've become acquainted with online. And there's just so much information out there to digest. I admit that when you're putting so much focus on your future life, your life outside of the United States, it can be hard to invest time into the relationships that you value and hold dear. And it is an unfortunate sort of trade-off because, because many people that we're close with back home are simply just not going to understand. They're not going to be able to see what we see. They're not going to want to acknowledge some of the problems that we see in our home countries. And they don't understand how going somewhere else can fix some of our issues. To some extent, I'd call it a luxury belief to believe that everyone should be happy in the West. You may be in a position where you're just counting down the days until you hit your financial independence number such that you can afford to move somewhere else. And that has you living an austere lifestyle and also a lifestyle where your free time is eaten up doing research. I mean, I've spent hours and hours and hours and hours trying to better understand the different countries, the different regions, the different places within those countries, budgeting, weather, all this stuff that becomes very complex when you're not able to just immediately run through all these countries in a tourist capacity. For me, I go back home for primarily two reasons. One, to see close friends of mine that I really enjoy spending time with, and then two, to make money to come back over here. And so back home, I'm not necessarily fully engaged in society in the way that most people would expect. I still try to work out and still try to do some other things, but like a lot of my attention when I'm back home is focused on somewhere else, trying to research, trying to plan out what a discovery trip there would look like. If I have vacation time, using some of that travel as well and investing the time I feel is needed to check out a lot of these really cool places that I've become interested in over the years. Number four, and this is going to be a kind of extreme turn for some of you, but crime doesn't keep them inside all night overseas. I know that back in the United States, many of the major cities are dealing with crime issues and it causes people to not want to go out as much. People are concerned about their safety. They're concerned about car break-ins. They're concerned about, they're concerned about paying through the nose for parking garage fees. There's just so many different things that come up to create this kind of abrasion to going out and enjoying yourself at night. Now you can go to friends' places and I think that's a lot of fun, but I definitely feel that the nightlife back home is kind of muted due to safety issues. And you just don't experience that in Southeast Asia near to the same extent. Am I gonna say every country and region for every activity is perfect? Absolutely not. You do need to be cautious over here. But I find at least here in Thailand that it's quite safe for me to wander around at any hour. I've wandered through Bangkok at 3, 4, 5 a.m. I've wandered through Pattaya at 2, 3, 4 a.m. And I've never had any issues. Now, of course, I don't drink, so that's certainly gonna be part of the situation there. But it's just a relief to be able to go out and enjoy myself and not worry about my safety. And so I don't feel cooped up. Like on one hand, back home, I'm staying up a lot researching. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, most of the businesses around here close at 9, 10 p.m. at night because it's not safe for them to be open later. So like the opposite is true here where it's like, oh, okay, it's seven, eight o'clock, it's cooled off some, I think I'm gonna go 
out and hit up a local restaurant, or I'm gonna go down to the 7-Eleven and get some cold beverages, or I might go meet up with a friend to go explore some part of town I've never been in before. And so there is some of that newness in play. There is also that safety factor. And I think that the security issues back home do contribute to people's loneliness. I've known numerous wealthy people who one of the primary things they spent time on was protecting their assets, protecting their home, protecting their place. And I think that adds to the isolation as well when you're trying to make character judgments about other people and what you have to do to stop those people from robbing you, then you are going to separate yourself from others to some extent. Now I know I'll get somebody in the comment section telling me about how they live in Mayberry and they never have any issues at all, but certainly some of us have some problems with security and having to create these extraordinarily strong boundaries between us and other people. The fifth and final point as to why many expats feel less lonely overseas is that they may be in a more open-minded dating culture. Whether it be age gap or LGBTQ, they may feel that whatever their preference is, back home they're getting judgment for it, they're not considered acceptable, people are talking behind their back, people are saying that they don't fit in, people are coming up to their significant other and maybe making some ugly comments, and they feel that hey, if I'm in another country, they may be more tolerant. This goes across the board. I find here in Thailand, people are not judgmental. Whatever you like to do, as long as it doesn't actively hurt other people, many people seem to be just fine with it. They may not want to live that in their own lives. They're not going to be outwardly judgmental toward you about your relationship that may be considered unacceptable back in your home country. I enjoy dating in Southeast Asia because where I grew up, there weren't a lot of Asian American women. And so I was always, having a cross-cultural relationship, which is interesting. You really learn a lot from cross-cultural relationships. But I did want to see what would it be like to date women who also come from an Asian background like myself, and that's been really rewarding and interesting and engaging. I really like that about Southeast Asia. I feel that people don't have negative preconceived notions about Asian people to the same extent that they do in the West. Now, I didn't have issues with dating in the West, but when I got older, I found that not everybody has a positive feeling toward Asian people or children of Asian immigrants, those stigmas just don't exist here in Thailand. For me, I'm just considered a generic foreigner, at least as far as what I can tell. I have Thai friends that they don't look at me as strange and they appreciate that I am a fan of the culture and that I respect people and I love the place. So this has been five reasons as why I think many expats will feel less lonely living abroad. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you feel less lonely living outside of your home country? Do you feel more connected to that sense of community and that sense of belonging if you're living in a Southeast Asia or a Latin America. Additionally, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm and we'll see you soon.